put them underneath the loading dock. By the grandfather of Impressionism, Claude Monet, everyone knows him. It's painted from the high period of Impressionism, that is sort of from 1872 to 1875. So this is 1873, right in the middle of it. It's of Argentoy, one of the most desirable subjects. And a painting, or rather an image, he only painted five times in his career. And this is the only one left in private hands, as I said earlier. The others being in the Musée d'Orsay, the National Gallery of Washington, the Philadelphia Museum of Art. So it's an, a, a painting of absolute importance. These are the images we all grew up with. These are the names we all grew up with. So it's an easier departure point for say, than, say, some of the other sort of collecting areas. But I think most importantly, people are drawn to these because this is where it really starts in terms of a 19th and 20th and 21st century collection as people, as people build this. This is where it starts. This is the departure point. So it makes sense to collect them. The uh, painting in many ways typifies exactly what one is looking for in a Lucian Freud painting. I mean, the, the wonderful way that the flesh is painted in this incredible Rubensian way, uh, the psychological uh, uh, insights into the, the face uh, uh, combined with sort of the beautiful way the, the, the couch is represented. Francis Bacon is, is one of the most sought after and widely regarded as one of the most important artists of the late uh, 20th century. There are very, very few of these large format triptychs, for which he is best known, still remaining in private hands. There are only 18 or so. This is universally acknowledged as, as the best of those remaining, um, and it deserves to be in, in a collection alongside Rembrandt, Picasso, uh, the greatest artists of, of our history. Well, I'm not expecting the bubble to burst. Uh, it, it may slow down, but I'm not expecting a uh, collapse like we had in 1990 and 1991. Um, and the reason that I'm not expecting it is that I think that the, uh, the, uh, the buyers are much more diverse, much more, um, uh, they're, they're less tied to one economy. The advice that I have always given uh, to people who want to buy paintings is um, learn as much as you can about the art and buy what you like. Uh, do not buy because you have heard that it's cheap or some artist is fashionable and it's going to go up in price because in my experience you're very often disappointed if you don't buy works that you have uh, really chosen carefully. And just yesterday we made a world record in front of the center of Papa, your painting. Oh my God. Yeah. 
what's exciting about today's market is that you have not only uh, collectors in specific markets, like people that specifically collect School of London paintings uh, uh, or specifically figurative paintings, but you also will have some crossover collectors. So you have all these people feeding into the market, and that really is what's making the, driving the market today. Tastes change, and there are so many speculators out in the market, and if you don't predict their taste, then you're in big trouble. So I, I, I find that really an irrational way to, to relate to art. I know whatever I buy is going to appreciate, actually, because I do a lot of research and I know a lot of artists because I've grown up in with the artisans. I kind of, I have a nose, I have a nose. <laughs>